and its entertainment all the way this Friday night on BBC One. Getting things off to a lively start now, wipe out. Please welcome your host on Wipeout, Paul Daniels. We've got three hopeful people here, all wanting to win our super holiday, and you can win it at home. But the only way they can win is by winning through Wipeout. You, of course, you get a better chance. All righty, who's in seat one? Hello, I'm Pamela Woods. I'm from Ballymena in County Antrim, and I'm an education welfare officer. At school, my name was Glam Pam. Glam Pam, that's funny, that, isn't it? Mine was Small Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't think of it, it still is. <laughs> All right, who's next? Hi, Paul, I'm Brian Neal, originally from Gateshead, now from Bishop Auckland. I'm a sales executive, although I used to be a toilet cleaner. A toilet cleaner? <laughs> And is it true you can kill all known germs? Is it, or is it just that you're round the bend? <laughs> Elaine. Hi, I'm Elaine Piper from Hitchin, married with four children, and my nickname's Hedgehog. Hedgehog? <laughs> Would you believe she got run over three times just walking across to the studios, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. I wish you all the best, and let's play Wipeout. <laughs> Right, it's fingers on the buzzer. You know what happens, decide who goes first. You stand by, you get a starter question. All right. Which part of an egg is more correctly called the albumen? <coughs> Elaine. The white. The white. Let's see the first subject. Rhyming slang. Let's see the answers. Now then. Which of these words are traditional? Cockney, rhyming, Slang. Adam uh, and Eve. Uh, give me a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to say to people, there are 16 answers, 11 of them right, 5 are wrong, and all that stuff. Oh, go on then. Adam and Eve. <laughs> well, would you Adam and Eve it? <laughs> Believe it. Apples and pears. Apples and pears? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Apples and pears, that's the stairs. Right? It's a group of Spanish people writing this down now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till they get home, eh? <laughs> Trouble and strife. Trouble and strife? Yes, trouble and strife, that's the wife, you see? China plate. China plate? Just a minute, did you move to Hitchin in Art to, from yeah. this region? East Ham. East Ham. <laughs> we was, never know we're going to I was only get... very young at the time. You're on, you still are very young, Elaine. <laughs> Child bride, obviously. Say, so it's China plate. That's your mate. Plates of meat. Plates of meat. That's your feet. You're doing well. You're up to 150 pounds. <laughs> 60 pounds on the next answer. Current bun. Current bun. That's the sun. Maggie's den. Maggie's den. <laughs> you lost 210 pounds. You're wiped out. Maggie's den is not traditional Cockney rhyming slang. And let's face it, Maggie is too recent to be traditional. OK, Pamela? I think I'll go for tit for tat. Tit for tat? <laughs> yes, it's a hat. And strawberries and cream? Strawberries and cream. <laughs> Somebody agree with you? <laughs> yeah. What did you think it rang with? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, now come on, love. <laughs> Stock and barrel. Stock and barrel. <laughs> Rhymes with what? <laughs> I'm not a cock. <laughs> <laughs> There's still four correct answers up there and two wipeouts. Auntie Mary. Auntie Mary. <laughs> Auntie Mary. What does that rhyme? Us. Julian Clary. <laughs> But well, we couldn't get him, so we got a little fairy. Oh. Uh, and there's your little booby prize to take home. All right. Don't know whether it'll stand up. Oh, right, OK. All right, then. So, it's over to Pamela. It's four to one in your favour. All you've got to find is traditional 
rhyming slang. Okay, I'm going for Kerry Packard, as in knackered. <laughs> That's all the wipeouts have gone. <laughs> all right. And at the end of that round, Pamela's on none. <laughs> Brian's on none. <laughs> and then Elaine's in the lead because she's got a fairy. <laughs> right, here we go. By what name do we commonly call the Inuit people of Greenland? Brian. Eskimos. That'll do. And the subject is... Created by accident. Let's see the answers. Now then, five of these products were designed on purpose, OK? You're looking for the 11 that were created by accident or are used for a purpose other than the thing they were originally created for, you see? Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola was designed and it was sold as a brain tonic. <laughs> I drunk a lot of that, you know. <laughs> Pepsi-Cola. Pepsi-Cola. Yes, that was designed to cure indigestion. <laughs> you know, this Pepsi or some Pepsi, yeah, yeah Pepsi. Yeah. Frozen food. Frozen food. <laughs> oh. Somebody called Bird's Eye did it after seeing Eskimos catching fish. And, you know, by the time an Eskimo's caught a fish, it's frozen anyway, isn't it? <laughs> really? Blotting paper. Blotting paper? <laughs> yes. You suppose, you know, I don't know if you know, but when paper is made, it is sized. Like, you know, like you size your walls and all that. And a fella forgot to do that and noticed that the paper soaked up ink. <coughs> Invention born. You've got £30, next one's £40. Tipex. Tipex. <coughs> yeah. You see, a typist actually saw a sign writer paint over his mistake. So she did the same. Tipex was invented. Pamela, there are still eight answers up there. Brian and Elaine, with unerring instinct, have found wipeouts. <laughs> Avoid them. I'll try to do that. I'm going for cat's eyes. Were cat's eyes deliberately designed? <laughs> yes, they were. The man that invented them saw a cat walking towards him, see? And they reflected, and he went home, and he made them. They were deliberately invented. As Ken Dodd says, if the cat had been walking the other way, the fellow would have invented the pencil sharpener. <laughs> Super glue. Super glue. Yes, it was invented by accident. It was during a photographic experiment. The lenses stuck together and they couldn't get them apart. They thought, bye, heck, that stuff's good, isn't it? You know. Pass. Pass, pass, pass. Oh, thank you. TCP. TCP. TCP was designed as a cure for a specific medical problem. And then it was found to have other uses. Soya meat. Soya meat. <laughs> yes. And this is good news for all those vegetarians out there. Soya meat was meant to be an alternative for leather upholstery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. You've got £110. The next one's worth 70 Pass. Pamela, you've got five correct answers up there and two wipeouts. Custard powder. Custard powder. <laughs> was designed on purpose because his wife couldn't eat eggs. So he deliberately designed the powder to take out the eggs from when you make custard. Brian, £40. 
<laughs> you've oh, got £40, pounds, I mean, you're entitled to another 70 if you find it. It's five to one in your favour. And Harpick is your choice. <laughs> For all those ladies who bend over the bowl and put it down, and you should know about this being a toilet cleaner, you know. <laughs> this was an explosive byproduct from the First World War, and somebody noticed it fizzed when it wet. It was wet, you see. Yes. So they put it down the loo, and come on, heck, that's clean. That's it. Yes. Post-it notes. Post-it notes. That was designed by accident, and the way the way it came about was. The fellow who was making it was deliberately designing the strongest glue on the market. <laughs> and he found it hardly stuck to anything. So he thought, oh, oh look, this paper comes off. Post-it notes. And now the world can't remember what they did before. <laughs> Ivory floating ship. Ivory floating soap. Soap even. <laughs> <laughs> what, sorry? I thought it was, I thought it was ship. <laughs> Dyslexic fall. <laughs> do, do you wear glasses? No. no. I think maybe you should. <laughs> yeah. I'd have gone for it earlier if I thought. This was... ivory floating <laughs> ship full of soap. <laughs> you should have kept your mouth shut because you can't claim any credit for that now, can you? <laughs> Uh, yeah, what happened there was the soap worker left his machine on over lunch and it whisked the soap so much, full of air, see, and it floated when it was made and they thought, oh, we'll market that. And that was it. You got £280. Next one's worth £100. Pass. Pass to <laughs> Elaine. Elaine? Disposable nappies. Disposable nappies. <laughs> well, that's the... Uh, Wipe out for you, I'm afraid. It's the last one, of course. And so I can tell you that Airfix Toys, they couldn't afford to deliver the model tractor all in one piece, so they made it in a kit form, and people liked it better, so they went into business doing that. What else have you got? Guide dog up there. Uh, there's a pet dog helped a patient recover, and the doctor trained other dogs, you know, to help others, and eventually became the help of the mind. That's how that came out, which is nice, really, isn't it? What was, uh, what was yours? Disposable nappies. No, they were designed on purpose. Oh, you've got a, you got a prize here, look. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> there you go, souvenir. The fairy can wear it. How old's the kid? <laughs> the fairy can wear it. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Righto. Well, at the end of that, Brian's in the lead with £280. <laughs> OK, let's, let's crack on. Let's see who gets uh, something out of this. Uh, a finger on the buzzer. If I was to say the word apian, it would relate to... <coughs> Bees. You're absolutely right, Brian. You're in charge of the round again. Very good. Good answer. So, let's see what you've got there. Tasty places. Brian, £10 for the first answer from this grid. <laughs> More prizes <laughs> hidden behind there, of course. Which of these foods are named after places? These are place names, OK? And they have foods named after them. Dundee. Dundee. Yes. Has cake. Named after <laughs> Dundee cake. It's a Scottish city on the Firth of Tay. Pontefract. Pontefract. Yeah, Pontefract cake. West Yorkshire town. Used to grow licorice all round it. Probably still do a bit, I think. Kendall. Kendall. <laughs> you know what you get there? Mint cake. Mint cake. Yeah, it's great. Cumbrian town, that. I'll pass. OK, Elaine. Depends how well you know your foods. There are foods named after some of these places. Cheddar. Cheddar. <laughs> Cheese. Somerset Village, that be? Eccles. Eccles? Oh, that's right. Eccles. <laughs> the cake. And that's a Manchester place. Stilton. Stilton? Yes, that's a cheese. A little Huntingdonshire village. Branston. Branston? 
village near Burton upon Trent, and it's in a pickle. <laughs> Bath. Bath? Bath. Bath, where I come from, though, yeah. Our mystery winner can celebrate their appearance on Wipeout with this case of luxury champagne. Wipeout champagne. Yeah. By the way, for those who don't know, Bath Bun. I thought everybody knew. Pass. And you're passing. You've got £300. Brian's on £340. Pamela, your next answer is worth £90. You have to find the, the three correct answers. Bourneville, please. Bourneville. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK. Bourneville it is. You've got uh, Bourneville chocolate, and it's a Birmingham suburb. You've got £90. There are two correct answers and five wipeouts. I go for Chelsea. Chelsea. Yeah. Chelsea, Bonn again in London. You've got £190. Brian's got 340 Elaine's got 300 It's a lot of money. There's still one correct answer and five incorrect answers. I think I'll pass, please. Passing to Brian. Brian, you've got to find the one. Lime's World. Lime's World. Uh -uh. It was an invented name to sell cheese. Yeah. I knew that. <laughs> that was an invented name. Elaine. Dover. Dover. Dover salt. <laughs> Dover salt, see? Dover salt, it's a Kent port. Kent Port. All right, and at the end of that, we've got Elaine, £410 in the lead, and I have to say we'll be losing Brian. Sorry about that, mate. Pipped right on the last bit there you were. You really were done. It's not my fault, Pamela. <laughs> Pamela, <laughs> You do, of course, get the, uh, the wipeout umbrella, and uh, you've had the great pleasure of meeting me. Exactly. <laughs> Shut up, audience. <laughs> And of course, Pamela and Elaine, you're going on to play the Wipeout Up. <laughs> Time for a Wipeout auction. You two are going to play it. And uh, to decide which of you are going to play for the fabulous holidays, you know. Uh, oh, and you at home now have a chance to win the same holiday as they're going to play for, OK? That's if you know the answer to this Wipeout question. Which of these words makes sense when read backwards? You'll see them on the screen. We go acts on. OK? So which of those words makes sense when you read it backwards? I'll give you the number at the end of the programme. You give us a ring. You could be going on holiday. And here in the studio, the game moves on. Elaine, you've got £410. Can't take it away from you. Pamela, you've got £190. Can't take it away from you. Elaine, you've got a fairy. Can't take it away from you. All right? You've got a nappy. Don't want to take it away from you. <laughs> You've got a crate of champagne. You're doing very well. All right? Pamela there, hanging on, skin of the teeth. <laughs> Never know. But you get the first bid, OK, Elaine? You get the first <clears throat> bid. Here's the subject. Lloyd Webber shows. <sighs> Says Pamela. So now, let's have a look at the answers. Andrew Lloyd Webber wrote the music for which of these shows? Andrew Lloyd Webber wrote the music for which of these shows? You can make a bid of up to eight. There are eight correct answers in the 12. Five. Five. <coughs> now, Pamela, you have to outbid <coughs> that by going for six, seven, or eight. You're looking for Andrew Lloyd Webber writing the music for which of those shows? I'll go six. Six. I go seven. Mm. <laughs> I'll let you take it, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Away you go, Elaine. You've got to find them. You've said you're going to find seven. If you do, you'll take the first grid. It's best of three in a wipeout auction. Phantom of the Opera. Phantom. Chess. Chess. 
And you only need one to take the grid, Pamela. Cats. Cats. He didn't write Miss Saigon, Les Miserables or Barnum. All right, all great shows on the board there, and it shows great shows he's been writing. But there you go, but they're all great shows. Enjoy them all. Pamela, you've got the first grid, and of course, in this one, you get the chance to take over the bidding. All right, you can bid first or pass the bid. And the subject is. And the answers are. Now. You've got long-running television shows, and the question is obvious. Which of these shows have been running for over 25 years? <laughs> Neither of you, of course, then would be around when they start. <laughs> so, for over 25 years, these shows have been running, but only eight of them. How many do you bid? I'll bid three. Bid four. I think I'll let you take the four, <laughs> Elaine. <laughs> Elaine, you have to find four shows on the grid. Mm. To take this grid and you need it to stay in the game, you've got to find four shows that have been running for over 25 years. Coronation Street. Coronation Street. <coughs> Started in 1960. Blue Peter. Blue Peter. Started in 1958. Come dancing. Come dancing. Started in 1950. Panorama. Panorama. If it did, you've taken this, this grid and you'll be one grid each. If it isn't, then of course it goes to Pamela. Let's see. Wipeouts there were. Question of sport. Last of the summer wine, Mastermind and Newsnight have not been running for over 25 years. All the others have. It's amazing, isn't it? Top of the pops there, we've got at 1964, World in Action, 1963. What else didn't you pick? Grandstand. Grandstand was 1958, and Tomorrow's World is 1965. They've all had good runs. Great programs, that's why. Okie dokie. Now it's exciting, isn't it? <laughs> so we stop the program there and hope you join us next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the nerves, the nerves, the nerves. All right. Elaine, you'll get the chance to bid first on this grid. This is the final <laughs> wipeout auction subject. Tower of London. The answers are... Eight of those people were imprisoned in the Tower of <laughs> London. Eight of them. How many do you bid? Four. Four. Eight of those people were imprisoned in the Tower of London. We have a bid of four from Elaine. I think I'll let Elaine take the four. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're going to let her take the four? Yeah. <clears throat> OK. Four will let you play for the holiday. Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn. Was she in the Tower of London? <laughs> yes. Now you only need three to be playing for the holiday. Catherine Parr. Catherine Parr. No, why back? <gasps> Pamela, if you can name one of those people that was imprisoned in the Tower of London, you will be playing for the holiday. If you don't, it will go back to Elaine. <coughs> Catherine Howard. Catherine Howard. Yes. Good game. The other White House were Thomas Beckett, Francis Drake, and Lord Ho Ho were not imprisoned in the Tower of London. Elaine, you can't be too unhappy. No. Not with that nappy. <laughs> not with that. Now that's fairy. <laughs> the, and, of course, the crate of champagne will be celebrating later, I know. And you've got £410. And an umbrella. Oh, wonderful. I tell you. So you've been a great player. I'd like a nice round of applause to this lady. She played really well. Thank you.
Great job, well done. You did really good. Pamela, you have got £190, and now you're going to play our final exciting round for tonight's star prize, and you've got a minute to win it. Tonight's superb Wipeout Star Prize is a fabulous trip to Hong Kong. An exciting and vibrant place, yet peaceful and romantic. The old Chinese traditions mingle with modern high-tech living, and the familiar face of the West blends with the mystique of the East. It's a kaleidoscope of contrasts. Indeed, a trip of a lifetime. This is one time I really don't want you to wipe out, OK? The time I want you to play. Now, let's show you a silly example of how the machine works. Um, all of these switches here, they're big, but they're switches. These panels are switches, and they refer to the grid. You get a set of answers, and in, in my case, you say, no, you don't get those, aren't your answers. You don't get excited. You don't get excited. You've got to pick the subject, but these are mine, all right? So what I do is I, um, I have to find these. It's easy for me. I've got the answers on the card, you see? Like that, see? And then you must run over here at lightning speed. Don't waste your time. Hit it. You got it, OK? And then yeah. you'd be going to Hong Kong. Now, the thing is, in my case, what are those questions? What's the question, you see? And the question is, what are the names of the seven dwarfs, you see? But I'll give you that first, and then you go. And uh, the others are all MPs. Boozy green. <laughs> see, 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 see. See? That's how okay. it works. All right? Get the idea? Yes. Don't forget, this is important. You've got to switch one off to switch one on. OK. OK? Deselect to reselect. And all you've got to do is choose one of these subjects. <laughs> Pamela, you've got the choice of film sequels, cats, sporting numbers, red. Um, red, please. Red. <laughs> red is your chosen subject. Let's see the answers. Those are the answers. Which of those colours are shades of red? Which of those colours are shades of red? You've got a minute to win it. Your time starts now. You've only got five. Come back, you've got, you only got five. You've got to light another one. Just one more. Just one more. Wonderful. That's a trip to Hong Kong. Really? That's amazing. And you've got 190 pounds, which you buy most of Hong Kong. That's right. I'm so glad you have it. She's wonderful, isn't she good? And of course, you now get the chance to win the same holiday, don't you? All you've got to do is you've got to answer this question. Which of those words makes sense when you read it backwards? And then ring 0891